And welcome to the Nature Journal Connection. I'm your host, John Muir Laws. Today, we're going to make a collection. Many people collect different sorts of objects. Some people baseball cards, stamps, coins. I collect nature phenomena in my journal. And this is a wonderful invitation for an adventure and a discovery. The way it works is like this. You walk out to a place and you say to yourself, hmm, what's kind of going on here in this place at this time of year? Well, right now, I am sort of at the edge of winter and spring. So a number of the deciduous trees in this area, those are the ones that have dropped their leaves, they're now getting ready to burst out new leaves from their buds. So I'm going to make a collection of branches and buds of deciduous trees. This is an adventure that is going to pull me all around this area. And as I hike and as I explore today, I'm going to be adding more and more and more and more examples of tree buds to my Nature Journal page. You can make these sorts of collections about all sorts of different phenomena. The patterns that snow makes when it melts. The seed pods that are left after plants have bloomed. The buds themselves. You could make a collection of flowers. You could make a collection of birds. You could make a collection of sounds that you hear. You could make a collection of things that are blue or purple or orange. You pick the category, and what you're going to find is as you're walking around looking for, hmm, I'm going to try to find things that are slimy. Looking for these things that are slimy is going to get you to look in places and in ways that you don't normally look. And then, you start to see all these different slimy things, and then you're thinking to yourself like, wow, what are the similarities and differences between these? And you may make some interesting discoveries about slimy things in your area. If you don't like slimy, you can also go for fuzzy. So that's the strategy with a collection. Give yourself a category, go out, investigate and explore, and on the page of your journal, you can add more and more of these objects. And a great thing about this is you can do this anywhere. If you're in a national park where you can't collect things to bring them home in another way, you put these into the pages of your journal with words, pictures, and numbers. This is a collection that you can bring um, anywhere, that you can do anywhere, and that you get to keep.
Because I've just been focusing on buds today, I've noticed a few things that otherwise I don't think would have really been on my radar. The most interesting to me is that uh, this is a little branch that I've drawn right here from a western sycamore. And they've got fairly small buds. But take a look at the size of the leaf. So this is a leaf from last year. It's a huge leaf, but a fairly small bud. And the same is true for big leaf maple. So it's a maple tree with very large leaves, fairly small buds, fairly small buds here. So one of my insights from this investigation is that you can't really judge a leaf by its bud. So there's no real correlation between how big the bud is and how big the leaf that is going to grow out of that. That's a cool discovery for me. I didn't know that before I started just doing a focused set of observations on buds today. That is one of the powers of this kind of an activity. So your nature journaling challenge this week is to create your own collection. What's seasonally appropriate for you or what's interesting to you? Give yourself a category, go out and explore, and collect as many of those examples as you can on your nature journal page. Then say to yourself, hmm, what are the similarities and differences between these? See if that collection can stimulate you to ask higher order questions about whatever sort of phenomenon you've discovered. And until next time, this is your Nature Journal Connection. Doo -doo -doo.